Jackson Dave Farrell da Disney. Só que também eu. I really believe he's freaking. Hey guys, it's Jimmy. Now we're coming back to another episode of Heroes and Generals, but it's War Thunder. And uh, you can probably see on the right here that it says Battle Pass Level 0. Yeah, that means a um, new Battle Pass drop. And then suddenly everybody becomes an asshole by spawning in their lowest battle rating rank 3 vehicle that you can think of. And uh, what? I hate you. <laughs> I really do. You know why? You had to make a video about the SAV 2012. You had to. You had to. And then Gaijin dropped the vehicle for sale like one one month prior to today. Or like a week or something before the new battle pass drop. I am seeing those pieces of shit everywhere. <laughs> but anyway, moving up the line of aviation, we are now looking at the second tier aircraft that you can get in Euros and Generals. And of course, this is thankfully not a alternative, although the stats cards kinda say it's otherwise, like, who the hell is typing this shit, man? Like, I saw somebody call the Stuck 3 G the Stuck 3 F in Euros and Generals, like, why? Anyway, this is the 109 E4, and it is one of the OG aircraft that you can get in Euros and Generals, one of the first few aircrafts that you can have, and uh, it's kind of an unusual experience because in the last video we played the F variant. And now we move down to the E variant. So thankfully the E4 version is using the upgraded MGFF autocannons and instead of one of them like the 109F1 that we have in the last video, we have two of them. And yes, this is a very devastating aircraft, but here's the kicker though, that is assuming you know what you're doing. Now first things first, the flight characteristics. Now you can go up to 580km an hour and more, maybe around 600, 620, 30 or something I remember. Going up as fast as 700 and it doesn't really rip my wings, but still though, at your own risk, please don't do that. However, something you need to keep in mind about the max speed on this thing, if you want to compare this thing with the last plane we played last week, it kinda feels a little bit chunky. And what do I mean by that? Sure, it can go very fast, it can retain its energy still decently well, but this plane feels like its energy retention isn't nearly as good. As the 109F variants. Now the next thing you need to keep in mind is the turn time on this thing. 21 seconds. Yeah, and this is probably the type of aircraft that people were expecting when they were turn fighting and expecting to win. So yeah, I really 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 do not recommend turn fighting in this thing. Adopt the boom and zoom, meaning like you fly in, engage the enemy, fly back up to altitude. Maintain your speed at all times and altitude. And then uh, rate of climb, again I really have no idea how to relay this to you so I'll just speak from my personal experience. It climbs decently well, even with a 250kg shell on board. And then if you go around maybe 10 degrees, 10, 12 degrees climb, you should be able to go up to 300 or 350km an hour before you reach your optimal altitude. Also something I noticed as well, Hans, you do realize your chair is... <laughs> it's an fiery explosive accident waiting to happen, right? <laughs> Never mind the fact that it's self-seeding, man. <laughs> anyway, moving on, the firepower of this thing. And yeah, like the machine guns in the last video, this is using the 792 MG17 machine guns. They're good at peppering airplanes. Maybe biplanes you can tear up, but if you're looking at motor wing aircraft, not so much. You're only good at making holes in everybody's left wing. As well as ground targets, and we are talking open top vehicles only. So my best bet is that if you run out of ammo on your 20mm, your best bet is to try to use these machine guns on the aircraft engine, or maybe just get lucky and pilot snipe the enemy. Anyway, machine guns aside, here is the daily part of the aircraft, the 20mm MGFF M cannon. Pretty much the same cannon that we used in the last video, but hey, the good news is that you have two of them. Unfortunately, the not so good news part, um, you only have 60 rounds in each 20mm. And like the 109F, and of course like the 20mm in the F variant, we do have a nice set of 20mm auto cannon rounds, again, 
fermentation incendiary gel, explosive incendiary, explosive incendiary, fermentation incendiary gel, and then the explosive, the explosive, and then EPHG. And thankfully, though, with an additional 20mm, yes, it does actually feel a little bit more powerful. Some of the motor wing aircraft, yeah, they're not going to be alive for very long when they get hit by this thing. Just be careful, again, you only have 60 rounds, so... Mm, maybe try not to engage in ground targets nearly too much with your 20 mils. Unless, of course, you really have to because it's one of those SO vehicles that needs to be put 6 feet under permanently. And of course, like the aircraft in Euros and Generals, we have the option to carry a single 250kg shell. But if you're playing this on your own, there's nothing wrong with running either a bunch of 50kg shells or a single incendiary 250kg shell. But pretty much, this 250kg shell, although it's only one of them, you can pretty much destroy most tanks you come across. Even up to 5.0. Now, I'm not telling you to take this thing out to 5.0, just telling you how devastating this bomb is. And so there you have it, this is the 109E4. Now, how does this compare to the one in Euros and Generals? I honestly have no idea, because the 109E4 was actually decently well made. In Euros and Generals, it does turn well. It does speed well, and then it does hit incredibly hard with the 220mm auto cannons. Recalling what people are saying about the 109E4, I can pretty much deduce one thing though. I don't think the 109E4 in Euros and Generals has convergence. To the point where people are having so much difficulty trying to shoot down a Yak-9 and they are saying that the Yak-9 was the best medium fighter of the time. Instead, they would rather go after the P-38s because of how massive the plane is. So, I suspect that in Euros and Generals there isn't really a convergence in the 20 mils. So accuracy is definitely an issue there. So, I guess I'll give this one again to Euros and Generals. Because end of the day, hey, at least you're hitting your targets with decent accuracy. And that's all I gotta say about the 109E4. Now let's take this thing out the battle and um, hopefully I don't run into those assholes in the SAV 2012. Open the vehicles. Oh, it's you. Yeah, no, I'm not supposed to use my penny mills on that guy, but anything to kill that bastard. Thank 
Somebody's not happy and decided to turn on his sex. to fly away before the SPA and gets funny. Attack 
Ah, man, pull up, man, do you want to? Really, come on. <laughs> I need to drop my bomb like five minutes ago. Another zone captured, we have the advantage.
Come on, hurry up. There's a guy I do not want to see. A knife. Way too high. Teachers and generals all over again. And he crashed. <laughs> the pickle.
Nintendo PC17. Here it is.